what we have here is uh, one of the scoops I got from a thrift store. Um, oh boy, I guess roughly about two years ago. I've unpacked this and um, it ended up costing me $15. It was under the glass with some of the other books they had put aside as special items. I haven't looked up its actual value or whatever, but um, it's, uh, it's a hardcover uh, book. Uh, the title is The Story of Edward the Black Prince um, by M. Jones with illustrations. Um, it is uh, an 1890 edition, so yes, it's uh, it's about 133 years old. Pretty sturdy shape, too. There's an inscription in there with the same date of 1890. Uh, apparently it was a prize given to... Uh, second prize for some sort of... It says the Horticulture Society of some sort. I don't know if this is that's an educational uh, institution at that time or some sort of... Uh, club but whatever someone was awarded uh, second prize with this particular book and uh, I've looked at the signature too and uh, and it uh, it's definitely Elizabeth but the second name is either well my two guesses are either Kirby or Kathy it's hard to make out it's a little bit illegible, but the cursor on the, uh, I don't know what you'd call that, not a dedictory, but um, someone had written in that the book was in fact the second prize for blah, 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 um, with the 1890 on. The cursor is amazing, which is probably something that was kind of mm, a little bit commonplace among the people that were actually writing, and you know, school teacher types, whatever. I mean, 1890. Uh, but anyway, um... Yeah, it's, uh, let's see, uh, T. Nelson and Sons, um, Paternoster uh, Row, uh, that's both Edinburgh and New York, uh, 1890 edition, and there's a little um, quote, I don't know who the quote is from, or by on that uh, opening title page, and it says, I'll tell you a tale of a night, my boy. My boy! Sorry, I had to throw that in there. My boy! Anyway, <laughs> I'll tell you a tale of a night, my boy. The bravest that ever was seen. And that, I guess, would be referring to Edward. Uh, now, the Black Prince. Um, yeah, so we're gonna... I'm gonna dip into that and read that. I'm going to show some of the other illustrations as we enter into the preface. As well as uh, the actual uh, dedictory and title page. There's the inscription there as well as the signature and you got a date there of 1890. Um, I'll read the whole thing in just a minute. Give me a second. But I want to look at the title page and, uh, and the first illustration they show. It's pen and ink drawings. Hold on. So there you have the title page and uh, also giving the uh, publisher's uh, stamp and uh, the date also 1890. Um, and that pen and ink drawing there, um, that's, yeah, that's pretty much what all the uh, uh, the uh, collection of drawings in this book look like all pen and ink, black and white, whatever. Um, yeah, I guess uh, we move on to the preface. But first, let me just read that actual uh, inscription there. As I said, the name there, it looks like Elizabeth Kirby or Kathy. Not sure which. Um, and... Yeah, the inscript Renfrew Horticulture Society, second prize awarded to Robert White. So it looks like Elizabeth Kirby or Kathy wasn't the original owner of this book. Uh, awarded to Robert White for collection of wild grasses. So it's some sort of club or school, 
horticulture. I don't know. They're teaching them something, I suppose. Um, anyway, and it's dated September 6th, 1890. Yeah. And I paid for this. I still have the uh, price tag from it, from Goodwill. And I paid $14.99, according to this tag. So there you have it. Preface. The Wars of Edward III in France are sometimes spoken of as though they were mere wars of aggression. To this view of them I cannot give an unqualified assent. The law of succession, though pretty well ascertained, was not so strictly observed in those days as to prevent all controversy upon the subject. And seeing that, in his peculiar case, others besides Edward himself thought that he had a claim to the crown of France, I am disposed to look upon his French wars as springing from an honest determination on his own part and that of his people, to rectify by force the wrong which, as he conceived, had been done him by the French nobles in assigning the throne to Philip of Valois. I do not affirm that he was in the right, but I do think he had sufficient grounds for supposing himself to be so. The circumstances of the case were undoubtedly such as to leave room for honest difference of opinion about it. Nor do I think that any one of us, who had as colorable a claim to a great estate as had Edward III, to the French crown, would leave any stone unturned in our efforts to get possession of it. Of course, we should not fight that is the ultimate process of nations. But not a single law court should we leave unvisited, carrying up our appeal step by step until we gained our cause or were barred by the final adverse decision of the highest court of all. As Edward was ultimately barred by the final adverse decision unmistakably expressed by successes in arms of the French nation. Much, however, as men may defer as to the merits of his claim, all must unite in unbounded admiration of the courage, fortitude, judgment, and generosity displayed by our great monarch and his greater son in those marvelous encounters between the few and the many, which have, for five long centuries, made Cressy and Poitiers names of pride throughout England, and the present seems a peculiarly suitable time for recalling in detail the far-off glories of the two Edwards, seeing that wars and rumors of wars have since 1854 been almost incessantly around us, and we, the few, as we were on those old battlefields, are sometimes disposed to look anxiously upon the many that, as we apprehend, may be against us. But Norman fire, grafted upon Anglo-Saxon endurance, is still our inheritance, and should war, either at home or abroad, be thrust upon us, with a just cause, and above all, with God for our hope and strength, we may with confidence look to come out of it as triumphantly as did the little imperiled band that followed Edward into France, and with more permanence of success than was awarded to them. Englishmen still pray as well as fight. M. Jones, London. September 11th, 1863.